Do you get stuck in analysis paralysis when trying to make a decision? While rushing into a decision is something to avoid, putting off a decision can also be harmful to your time, energy, work performance, and those depending on you. Putting off decisions will prevent progress, create frustration, and can undermine how others perceive you as a leader. This episode covers the skills to develop and the effective approach to improve your ability to make timely decisions. If you are new to the Women Taking the Lead podcast, hello and welcome. I'm Jody Flynn. I'm an executive leadership coach, speaker, and author. I'm the current president of the board for the Maine Women's Conference, and I have the privilege and joy to work with women leaders to hone the skills and the mindset that allow them to grow into and then thrive in senior leadership. My specialization is working with women who are still stabilizing after their last promotion and those who want to be ready for the next one. It's my belief that for more women to hold positions of senior leadership, there are changes at the individual and organizational level that need to occur. Not only do women need to be trained and coached on how to operate at these levels of leadership, organizations need to change their paradigm of how the work gets done and what supports are in place for leaders to do their job. If we are not already connected on LinkedIn, please send me an invitation to connect. You can find me directly at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Jody Flynn, or you can search for Jody Flynn on the platform. I'm very active on LinkedIn, so I should be at or near the top of the search results. You'll see the follow button is prominent on my profile, but if you click on the more button to the right, you'll find the option to connect. Click on that and be sure to add a note to the invitation, letting me know you're a listener of the podcast. I would love to connect with you and get to know you better. Decision-making skills help you quickly and efficiently analyze the situation so you can strategize and implement the best option. It's likely that in your role, numerous decisions need to be made every day. Decision-making at work often looks like comparing the leadership potential of several team members and choosing a project lead, selecting a job applicant to join your team, picking tasks to delegate and to whom, deciding how to use budgetary resources, Soliciting input from team members on challenges impacting the company. Choosing a strategy to use to meet team goals. Making a go, no go decision on a project. Comparing the strengths, weaknesses, and price of potential vendors. And there are many, 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 many other decisions I'm sure you make on a daily basis. The better you are at collecting data, and assessing a situation, the easier it becomes to make decisions and move on, conserving your time and mental bandwidth. There are numerous skills that you can develop to become a better decision maker. Here are a few high-level skills that encompass other skills that you can focus on to start. The first is non-judgment. Non-judgment is the ability to look at a situation clearly without bias or assumption. Judgment exacerbates your blind spots and prevents you from seeing new opportunities and solutions. The ability to approach decision-making from a place of non-judgment allows for new ideas and avenues to come into your awareness and be considered in a logical fashion. Other skills involved in non-judgment are self-management, emotional intelligence, openness, patience, and curiosity. Now let's take a look at emotional intelligence. This is the ability to be aware of and in control of your emotions and to express them in a healthy, measured manner. While emotions are signals for us to pay attention to, it's important to not let your emotions take over when pursuing an informed decision. 
It is especially important to control your emotions when you are working with others so you can convey your perspective effectively. Oftentimes, especially as women, if we are overly emotional when we are giving our perspective or our opinions, it's often used as an excuse to dismiss our perspective and opinions. So it's important to keep this in mind. Can you so show some emotion? Yes. Just again, in a healthy measured manner is what you're shooting for. So other skills involved in emotional intelligence are empathy, patience, active listening, self-awareness, situational awareness, and self-leadership. Next is problem solving. Being able to evaluate and solve a problem is the basis for making most decisions. To problem solve, you need to understand the problem at the level of the root cause, the variables that are impacting the problem itself, and the variables that might be blocking the solution. Other skills involved in problem solving are, again, active listening. We, <laughs> I did a whole episode pretty much on listening as a soft skill. So it's no surprise that in decision making, this is a skill that underlies a lot of other skills. So active listening, underscore, underscore, underscore. Next is asking good questions, logical thinking, facilitation, creative thinking, fact-finding, data analysis, and experimentation are all skills involved in problem-solving. Next up is collaboration. Not all decisions are made on your own. It's important to be able to recognize when the situation calls for a team approach and to include others in the decision-making process. Your ability to clearly communicate the goal and invite feedback from key individuals will be needed in this situation. Other skills involved in collaboration are organization, creating structure, here's active listening again, (laughs) openness to giving and receiving feedback, facilitation, expectation setting, and flexibility. Now, there are other tactical skills that I think are important to talk about when we're thinking about decision-making. So when making important decisions, here are some other skills that are also important to have. And if you don't have them, find someone who does. So those other skills are conducting polls and surveys, strategic thinking, project management, research, risk assessment, and cost analysis. Skill development takes time. As you're making decisions, identify where your gaps are and map a plan to develop those skills. Are you getting value from listening to the Women Taking the Lead podcast? If so, could you do me a huge favor? Could you leave a rating and a review in your favorite podcast app? Ratings and reviews make a podcast easier to discover and written reviews let a potential listener know whether or not a podcast might be of interest to them. Podcast reviews lend social proof that listening to the episode is worth someone's time. So if you have a minute or two, go into the Women Taking the Lead podcast show page in your favorite podcast app and you'll see how to leave a rating and review. Every app is a little bit different, but if you can't find a setting near the top of the screen, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to find it. For instance, on Spotify, click on the three dots that are to the right of the setting wheel, but on Apple Podcast, it's about halfway down the show page. Thank you so much. I see all the ratings and reviews. They are delightful and each one makes a difference. You now have an idea of the skills involved in making good and timely decisions. Now let's get into what would be an efficient approach to make these effective and timely workplace decisions. First, define the problem, challenge, or opportunity and give it a why. Why is it a problem? 
Why is it a challenge? Why is it an opportunity? You're going to have an, you know, another opportunity and another step to come back to this why, but it's important to state, you know, exactly what is making this a problem, challenge, or opportunity. Second, identify the deadline for the decision. Do we need to make it today, this week, this month? Or is this a decision that we don't really need to make for another three months, but we need to start the research now, right? So identify that. What's the deadline? What's the timeline? Third, generate a list of possible solutions or responses. So um, an example I often give is, you know, the challenge is the printer broke. Why is this a challenge? Well, it's not really a challenge for most people because most people aren't printing paper anymore. We're sending electronic documents. However, the printer is used by another department. And if they're not able to print for whatever reason, then they can't provide us what we need to do our job. So now that is definitely a problem for us. And so we need to make sure the printer is getting replaced. So generating a list of possible solutions or responses. So you're looking at, you know, what types of printers are we looking at? What brands are we looking at? What features are we looking at? You know, so we want to like start getting a list of what's out there. Then with each one, you're going to evaluate the cost and the benefits or the pros and cons associated with each option. So again, going back to the printers, you start looking at, you know, what's our best option here based on what's important to us. Is price important to us? Are features important to us? You know, it's brand (laughs) important to us. So you'll know based on where you're sitting, what the best options are for you as you start evaluating all this criteria. Fifth, Anticipate possible outcomes, including how projects, individuals, departments, and the organization as a whole will be impacted by the decision. Is this printer a backup for some other department's printer? So we need to think about what features they need as well. It might not be just about us and our department or this other department that we're relying on. There may be a business continuity plan that involves a whole nother division. So we need to think about this. Then select the sixth step is to select a solution or a response, right? Pick the printer. And then seventh, right? We're not just done. We haven't just decided what printer we're choosing. We need to implement the option that you chose. So buy the printer, order it, get it shipped. Lastly, step eight is assess the impact of the decision and modify the course of action as needed. So using this scenario of the printer, maybe we get the printer in and there's something we didn't think about. There's something we didn't know because it wasn't communicated to us or it was in a document that we weren't aware of that makes the printer we chose a no-go. In which case, we got to ship it back. We got to order a different one, right? You can always course correct after. And sometimes there's no knowing what the exact right decision is until you initially make a first one, right? Sometimes it plays out that way. Now for decisions that need to be made quickly, right? This might be a crisis situation. And I know for some of you, you're having flashbacks to March, 2020, when all of a sudden we were working from home and we had to make a lot of decisions very quickly and communicate them, or we need to get a lot of people involved in making the decisions really fast. So as you may have already experienced, what's important is being prepared ahead of time on how to make decisions when they need to be made quickly. So you want to have a framework within which you or your team can make decisions. You may need also need to empower your team to make decisions without you, right? If it needs to be done quickly, you might be on vacation or unwell or unreachable. This framework needs to include 
How would your team make decisions if you weren't around? So here's a bullet list that you want to make sure everyone is aware of. Company and team values. I heard a story that involved Disney and how Disney empowers each of their employees to make decisions and decisions that have like financial costs. And Disney makes it clear to all of their team members that if you make a decision and it is aligned with our company values, no matter what the cost, we will back you up on it. You will not be disciplined because a decision you made had a consequence as long as it is aligned with company values. That's powerful. That's really powerful when, I mean, think about it, that you as an employee, if you know the company values and you are living and making decisions according to them, or I should say working and making decisions according to them, although if you work for a company and your values match the company values, amen, that's an amazing situation. But you are empowered to make decisions because the company trusts that if you make decisions that are aligned with the values, it will be the right decision, no matter what. Amazing. So this is why you want to empower your team and you should also be aware of what are the company values? What are the team values? Next, everyone needs to be aware of company policies. Then the goals of the group and the organization. If we know what our goals are, it's a lot easier to make decisions because the the decision is either going to lead us towards our goal or away from it. And then also, what are the internal and external resources that are available? Not everyone knows all of the company policies, but is there someone we can consult and get the information that we need? Lastly, what are the known strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of your team or organization. There's an acronym. You may be familiar with it. It's called SWOT, S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. If you and your team have that information, also hugely helpful when making decisions. And I can say from my own experience during the pandemic, as a part of the main women's conference, there were a lot of really tough choices that we needed to make at that time. And I think I've shared this on the podcast before. What helped us reach decisions quickly and confidently was we had done a SWOT analysis, right? So we were aware of different things that we had in our favor and things that could work against us. And we also always, always, always came back to our mission and our values, right? So there were a lot of really great options on the table. There were a lot of things that we could do, but when we looked at our mission and our values, it narrowed down the options and made it a lot easier to decide. So I'm going to go over this list again, company and team values, company policies, goals of the group and the organization, internal and external resources that are available and known strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of your team or organization. Don't get bogged down by decisions. As I tell my clients, decisions gain weight over time. You lose precious energy by lugging decisions that need to be made around. Do your due diligence, make the decision, and course correct as needed. If you need help developing any of the skills involved in decision-making, let's chat. I would love to support you in developing your leadership and especially if you are post-promotion to help you get your bearings and feeling confident in your leadership once again. You can find the link to schedule an exploration call with me in the episode description. If you're listening through a mobile device, that link will be in your podcast app. If you are listening through the Women Taking the Lead website, the link will be toward the bottom of the episode webpage. If you're going to ask your company to sponsor you to work with a coach, there's also a link to access a checklist that will help you prepare for the conversation. 
As always, I hope this was of value to you, and here's to your success.